30 years old from Germany and 23 year old Southern Californian Lindsay Davenport. Duke and Duchess curtsy. This is a familiar walk for Groff seven times a champion for Davenport her first finals appearance. She along with Agassi and Sampras in the men's finals representing a strong American presence on this 4th of July. Today either a legend grows or a claim to greatness is bestowed in the Wimbledon ladies final. Though her place in tennis history is secure, Steffi Groff remains unequaled in her driving determination for more. She has seven Wimbledon singles titles, two shy of the record. She is two Grand Slam singles victories away from tying Margaret Court's record of 24. Four weeks ago, she claimed a surprising victory in France and now is ready to add to her legacy. 23-year-old American Lindsay Davenport is the reigning U.S. Open champion, the only Grand Slam title to her name, but with this Wimbledon run, she's now number one in the world. Always one to shun the limelight, she'll be thrust before it today. Groff, Davenport, the ladies' final, Wimbledon. And we welcome you to breakfast at Wimbledon from fame center court with a woman who graced these lawns three of her 18 career Grand Slam titles here at Wimbledon Chris Everett uh, Hall of Famer and we look at Lindsay Davenport and Steffi Groff as uh, they're going to have the spin see who will serve first for this coveted title for Steffi Groff what a remarkable summer See, so you can get old and it gets better oh, I tell you what I'm not surprised to see Steffi Groff in the finals here I mean if ever there was a Cinderella story at the old age of 30 she's <laughs> experiencing it right now winning the French Open potentially could win Wimbledon back to back you know and I think she went through that two and a half years of injuries last year she even said if I keep getting injured I'm going to retire and so I think she's emerged as a result a much tougher player emotionally mentally and physically and you know it's been just a wonderful summer for her win or lose this match. Yeah, and I think yeah, there's a relaxation about her, too, that we've watched here, that the confidence that comes with, she knows she's good, she's got all those titles, this is just <laughs> all frosting on the cake. Not so for Lindsay Davenport. She wants to win her first Wimbledon. Well, and Lindsay, it's going to be a little tougher for Lindsay because I think she matches Steffi in the power department, but when it comes to the mobility, Steffi is far superior. But Lindsay Davenport has regained that number one ranking. I mean, she has to be confident. She says that she feels comfortable on the grass. And boy, she hit some big ball in her match against Alexander Stevenson. I think she could give Steffi a run for her money in this match. Well, it's the 4th of July, an American in the ladies' final, and two Americans in the men's final, Andre Agassi and Pete Sampras. We'll see them later on center court. And we'll have the opening toss, the opening set, in just a moment. Weatherman has cooperated this weekend. Uh, lots of play completed yesterday. Lindsay Davenport and Steffi Groff under cloudy skies, a 20% chance of showers. Here's Groff, uh, who has established herself as one of the great players in tennis history. She's 5'9, 132 pounds, makes a home in Boca Raton and in Heidelberg, Germany. Ranked number three in the world, seated second by the Wimbledon committee. And uh, six and zero oh with her six wins in this Wimbledon championship on grass, and of course fresh from that great win in Paris. Well, Steffi had three three sets here, an easy match, Servanova, but Marianne de Schwartz scared her in that first set. Big server, Marianne de Schwartz, and then Karina Mar Mararu from the USA, a nice player. 16-year-old Kleisters uh, had a great tournament. Venus Williams, that match was definitely worthy to be a final. And then Mariana Lucic ranked 134. She had a dream Wimbledon also. So with those three three-set matches, uh, Lindsay Davenport knows that Groff is vulnerable and uh, hopes that uh, she can use the power of her ground strokes to establish a Wimbledon title, ranked number two. And actually, she's now the number one player in the world with her win in the semifinals. A record 28 and 5 with uh, titles won in Sydney and Madrid prior to Wimbledon. Lindsay had a much easier time in this tournament. She didn't really play any big names. Fusay, Hopsadova, Galarsa didn't lose a set, pretty easily cruised through the first three rounds. And even the next few rounds, Barbara Shett, Jan Novotna, the defending champion, that was a good win for her, maybe an upset in her mind. And, of course, Alexander Stevenson uh, just had the center court jitters and could not play her best tennis. 
And I think that might hurt her in this match because she has not been tested. She has not played anyone at the level of a Steffi Groff, or a Steffi is, she's just, I mean, especially in that match against Venus Williams, just dug deep and, and in her match yesterday Two minutes. with Lucic was really in trouble, down set and four all, and she just knows how to come back, and she's had to play her best turn tennis this tournament. Head to head, they have met 13 previous times with Groff leading eight to five. We saw them just a month ago in Paris in the quarterfinals, and Groff uh, had trouble. Davenport at uh, one stage looked as if she might uh, win that match, but uh, Groff 6-3 in the third prevailed. Well, the styles of the two, neither is uh, eager to get to the net. They will come uh, at times, but uh, Groff the more mobile. Uh, but uh, Davenport's power, Groff will match that? I definitely, I mean, I think Lindsay has a little more power than Steffi, certainly off both sides. I mean, Steffi's backhand is not a powerful shot whatsoever. It slices and stays low. And if you look at Steffi, she is the more mobile player, but she is a little bit Four injured minutes. right now. She says she has a strain on her left thigh. She's had to tape it. It happened during the Venus Williams match, and perhaps that was the reason why she defaulted the mixed doubles with John McEnroe. John was uh, devastated <laughs> by that. He really thought that he could go on, and, and I, along with a lot of other Ladies people, thought that they could win a Grand Slam mixed, mixed doubles. You make sure you take all your so John McEnroe, Steffi Groff, a very popular you, mixed doubles team sure that drew the longest cues of the fortnight to see them play. They'd made it to the semifinals, but uh, John received the bad news late yesterday. Groff decided that she didn't want to risk any further injury to that thigh, he wanted to be ready to win a possible eighth title. Her mother, Ms. Heidi, won the toss and chose to coach receive. to the right of your picture. Heinz, Heinz Gunhardt, who's been with her for about five or six years now. And Steffi's great. Steffi's loyal to her coaches. She has a few injuries, a few losses. She doesn't play musical chairs with those coaches. Tom. She's stuck by him. He's stuck by her. And they've been good for one another. And the mother, Heidi, as we uh, related in Paris, uh, not a typical tennis mother. I asked uh, Steph, I said, when you were young and you finished the tournament, uh, got in the car with your mom, did she ever critique your play and say you should have tried this or why did you do that? She, oh, she, no, she would never uh, talk tennis. She, she'd just give me a hug and say you'll be good again next time and would drive on home. She's a wonderful lady and I, I live a block away from them in Boca Raton. She's always invited me over for barbecues and, you know, just takes the pressure off Steffi because Steffi is really an intense person. Applause for Davenport and Groff as this center court crowd anticipates the, set the opening Groff. serve. Steffi Groff with that honor. It doesn't look like that thigh is hurting <laughs> the way she was running that point. Fifteen. And I'm sure Davenport will try to keep it to Groff's backhand as much as she can and even come into the net because Lindsay's a very accomplished doubles player. She's in the finals of the women's doubles. 15. Percent. She actually feels very comfortable up there and with her height is tough to lob. Good reach off both sides, long arms. It's Groff's 14th. Wimbledon. She arrived here as a 15 year old, went all the way to the fourth round in 84. And from day one, her opponents respected that shot, the forehand. 
Well, this is the side she hits most of her winner. She she's so accurate along with the power. And here she runs around. She's practically in the doubles alley. Wants to avoid that backhand side if she can. Lindsay Davenport, if it gets to a pressure situation, if she happens to win a set, she mentally is so tough. Unlike the, the Venus Williams, the Lucic, when they had a lead, Lindsay's had that experience. She's a big match player. She's won the Olympics, won the US Open. She's been there before. Cut. Early sparring between these two finalists, staying on the baseline. Baseline, she can hit winners, outright winners. Look at how far she is behind the baseline. I mean, that usually you hit winners mid court balls, but really steps into that forehand and drills it. Deuce. But she does leave that side open because she is protecting her backhand. And the ground strokes at Davenport are deceptively powerful. Advantage, Miss Groff. But she doesn't want to get caught six feet behind the baseline against Steffi. And Lindsay likes to dictate from the first shot, and that's important to her game. Stretched her wide there. Off the baseline, and Lindsay Davenport has earned a break point in the opening game. was by far her best surface anyway, the Harcourt. She grew up on Harcourts, had won three big tournaments prior to the US Open, so it was really favored in a lot of people's minds to win it. But Steffi's strategy is going to try to stretch her wide if she can on both sides. Force her to get off balance. Oh, first time we've seen Lindsay at the net. Great approach shot deep to Steffi's backhand. Put Steffi on the defensive, right? This shot right here. Just flicked it back, but Lindsay was waiting for it. Good anticipation, good drop volley. And a big serve for 30-15. Talk about pressure, you know, even though Steffi is such a great pressure player, especially in big matches, all the pressure is on Steffi Groff in this match because after she beat Venus Williams, everyone expected her just to take the tournament. And Lindsay, up until this year, hated playing on grass and let everybody know it. 
First double fold to 30 all. Now she's benefited uh, back in Newport Beach, California from a neighbor who graciously has allowed her to practice on his grass court. And she says it really has picked up her game. Mm. Drop now with a break point. She practiced with uh, Rick Leach and former player Debbie Graham. It's tough to find a grass court in California or in Florida for that matter. Deuce. Another big serve. She opted not to play Eastbourne as Steffi Groff. They just practiced three, four hours a day leading up to Wimbledon. If she is going to pass with her topspin backhand, she goes about 80% down the line. That's the word out on her. The players know one another's patterns when they've played each other time after time. Well denying a break point. Davenport holds its too low. Ms. Davenport leads two games to love. This is the finals record of Groff. You know, the wins there Australian four times, French six, Wimbledon seven times, US five. Fifteen months. Well, and Steffi's success on grass is, I think, because of, of her mobility. I mean, a lot of players have power. You see Lindsay Davenport, who has power, Monica Sellis, Mary Pierce. I mean, there's some big pl power players out there. But they don't have the mobility to combine it with. So that's where Steffi definitely stands out. Thirty left. Forty left. It's a couple of Return of serve errors from Lindsay Davenport. Well, that was a breeze. That service game for Groff. 2-1, opening set. This extraordinary summer for Steffi Groff, who arrived in Paris. She'd only played in one tournament in two and a half months. She was just going to use it as a tune-up for Wimbledon. She winds up winning another Grand Slam. I mean, those past few weeks have been amazing. I mean, before Paris, I wasn't even sure if I was supposed to play Paris because I wasn't in the best of conditions and, you know, back hurting a little bit and I didn't play a lot of matches in, in the past few weeks before that. And and uh, what kept me really going was I was really to, to get some match preparation to come here to Wimbledon. And, then I win the French, and now I'm here in the finals. I mean, I can't ask of anything else. Well, I think the injuries in the past really took its toll on her confidence. I mean, she repeatedly expressed frustration at not being able to sustain her good health, and she was being rehabilitated and talked about leaving the game if the injuries didn't subside. She had knee surgery, she had foot surgery. But boy, she's one determined woman. And you know, Dick, I saw a little bit of strain on her face yesterday against Lucic for 13. the first time. You know, in the last four or five weeks, it's been a long five weeks for her, winning the French, overcoming Venus Williams playing some doubles with Macaron, having a great time, then having to withdraw. And then this is a woman, Lindsay Davenport, she knows is not intimidated by her, Thank like you. the younger players who held her as role models, had her posters in their bedroom. I mean, that's kind of intimidating then to actually play that person. Game. It's a Ms. big Davenport. serve by Lindsay Davenport. That's her weapon. Now she answers Groff's love service game with one of her own. It's 3-1, as we remind you, for up-to-the-minute scores and statistics. 
We invite you to visit the official Wimbledon website, www.wimbledon.org, and IBM eBusiness. Well, if Lindsay can continue to get that big first serve going with the power and the, the good, the high percentage, if she keeps it within the 70 percentile range, she can hold her serve. She's already broken Steffi once. And Steffi's missing a few of those forehands, perhaps going for the lines a little bit too much. I mean, she definitely wants to move Lindsay, but she doesn't have to go right smack for the line. Of 30 at 1-3. 15-30. Oh. Rallies get longer and longer. That will favor Steffi Groff. Lindsay wants to get this the points over with, I think, after three or four shots. 14 13. Wow, this is a big game for Lindsay. And just a little unlucky with the net cord. That was an unforced error. You really want to play tight tennis when you reach the finals of Wimbledon. Welcome back. Across from our broadcast location, far side of the court, Martina Navratilova working today for BBC Television. That was a clear picture of her. Yeah, well, she's in there, trust <laughs> she's us. She's in there, that <laughs> tinted window somewhere. Yeah. Martina said before the match, Chris, we're going to be on center court once again, just you and I, and it's true. They're the only two. TV boxes, BBC and NBC. So we feel pretty lucky about that. <laughs> Wonderful angle from Groff, 15 all. Still a good play though, uh, Lindsay Davenport, but boy, look at that. It's the beauty of having a slice backhand just over the net about two inches. Meanwhile, very crucial game right here for Lindsay. She just has to keep holding her serve in the first set, and the first set is hers. Oh. Brock with seven Wimbledon titles. There you see one behind Helen Wills Moody, the great American Hall of Famer, and Martina Navratilova. More than any man or woman, nine titles here at the All England Club. Her last was hard to believe it nine years ago. Oh, Lindsay. <laughs> the umpire changed that call. Replay the point, says Fiona Edwards, of Great Britain. Let's see if we can tell. It's hard to tell. It's because that chalk's on the outside of the line, behind the line also. Now Lindsay feels she deserves the point. Why didn't she hit it? That's her fault. If she had touched it, she didn't even take a swing at it. So why didn't she take a swing at it then? Well, if you don't have a play on the ball, if she chooses not to play the ball. Then they it's usually my point. give you the point. I'm sorry. She would have hit the ball. That's it. So they're playing a let. I mean, there's no question 
they overruled the call to, to end, but Lindsay's argument was she didn't even swing at the ball. So 15 30. Just studying the body language, uh, Chris Everett. I like what I see from Lindsay Davenport, and uh, I'm not so sure about Steffi Groff. Uh, I think Steffi? That, that's yeah. bothering her, that leg injury. 14. I just think when Steffi plays the younger players, they're, they're really dangerous, like a Kornikova. And a, I mean, they're all dangerous for about a set. You know, they can play great first sets. But Steffi always knows that experience and the way she plays the big points that will prevail. But this woman matches her in big, you know, as far as dealing with pressure. Game well played by Davenport. Builds her lead to 4 2. Davenport, leads Davenport four games with to her two. first title, as we have documented at the U.S. Open last year. She's won 90 Grand Slam matches. She's made it to the semis in Australia, the semis in France. Now the finals at Wimbledon. 15 and of course, the title in the U.S. She had never gone beyond the quarterfinals in her seven appearances at Wimbledon until this year. Oh, Steffi's had some luck when it comes to the net courts, boy. Yes, They've been on her side. That forehand looks a little bit shaky. It's a little hitchy at this point. Not as smooth as, as we've seen it. And 13, that 15. backhand, Lindsay still tries to penetrate that side. Wasn't really the jump she would have liked to have, like a Venus Williams who can really get up there and pop the ball. Drop holds. It's 4 3 in the opening set. It's done for Steffi Graf down a break at 4 3 in this opening set Lindsay Davenport here Tom. was her game plan prior to the opening serve today. Obviously she feels very comfortable on the surface. Um, you know I have to keep the ball deep I think most importantly and not let her dictate the rallies and I'm going to have to bend really low to get some of those backhands back and, and make a lot of first serves and, and I think those are the three main keys. And so far, so good. Yeah, I mean, she's getting Davenport. some big first serves in there. I think that's helped her to hold her serve. You know, she's number one in the world. She hasn't really enjoyed playing on the grass. She hasn't enjoyed playing on the clay. So why is she number one in the world? That's the question. And it's because she's so superior in hardcore tennis and indoors. She has great results, very consistent, very rarely has any bad losses. as she plays in a very relaxed atmosphere. I mean, it's just her and Robert, Lan uh, Robert Van Hoff, her coach. No family controversy. She, you know, she likes to say, hey, there are no skeletons in my closet, you know, and she also says she's a marketing nightmare. Ooh, Steffi floats in yet another backhand. There's Robert Van Hoff, her coach. You say a marketing nightmare because she's not, <laughs> yeah. she admits, I'm not charismatic, I'm vanilla, people you know, don't I'm, even recognize me. Uh, she can walk these grounds with no security guards and none of the other top seeds can do that. But she likes it that way. She likes the low profile. Mm, there Oof. was a big time backhand, 
50. Still very outspoken, though, in, her, in the quest for equal prize money. She was speaking on behalf of the WTA, and the women are receiving 83% of what the men are during this tournament, and they're not too happy with that. opening set. Invite you to log on to msnbcsports.com for a comprehensive tennis season. subsection entitled NBC Sports at Wimbledon. Access player interviews from the Wimbledon channel plus there's in-depth commentary and analysis on the top stories of this fortnight from Chris Everett and Bud Collins. msnbcsports.com the official website of NBC Sports. Steffi was not too happy. But when she gets mad, she goes up to another level. And that shows great mobility there, and, and also how effective that slice backhand is on the grass. Taking advantage of Groff's second serve. Well, Lindsay Davenport guessed the right way. She just went to, ran towards that backhand side, but was so far behind the baseline to hit a winner. Oh, had a bad bounce. That ball flipped the line, and it's in the dry patches back there around the baseline from all the wear and tear during the two weeks. Just didn't have a chance there. I mean, you have to allow for three or four bad bounces a match, if you're lucky. <laughs> I think Lindsay Davenport thought there was a lead on that uh, serve, but we heard something as well. It'll be Davenport serving for the opening set when we return. back during this towel off period Lindsay Davenport uh, questioning Fiona Edwards in the chair about that last serve uh, we did uh, feel there was a let she did she said how come the, the beeper didn't work there's an electronic system there is no net judge here at Wimbledon and that uh, sends a beeper to the chair umpire it's her call uh, Davenport uh, calmly comes back on court with a chance to serve for a one set lead, 5 4. Oh. And boy, now more than ever, Lindsay Davenport wants to get some big first serves in and place them well. Oh. 15. Steffi has been talking to herself the last three games, trying to get herself pumped up. She is not playing her best tennis so far in this match. And you know what? It's not good enough to beat Lindsay Davenport. It was still good enough to beat Lucic. But Lindsay's a different level. Oh, Lindsay took advantage of that net court. It slowed down Steffi's pace a little bit. Went to her weaker side. Steffi was nowhere near that shot. That time, the net cord went in her favor. Two points from the set. Nets for set.
50. Lindsay's coming in as if to say, OK, I'm going to make you pass me. That's oh. a third cross court backhand winner in this opening set for Groff. 30 15. Let's first Oh, the big line. serve under pressure. Lindsay's, we're talking about body language. It looks great. Her shoulders are back. Her he head is held up high. We had criticism last summer. And she was lacking confidence. Oh, boy. But keep it to the backhand, though. Yes, the backhand stays low, and it's a, a great shot on grass, but she doesn't hit as many winners. That forehand side is lethal. Set point two. Ten forehand winners so far from Steffi. Oh, lower and lower. The opening set to Lindsay Davenport. 6-4 in 32 minutes. And Davenport on her serve allowed Groff in five games only eight points. And Groff. Trying to get her opponent's attention. Starts the second set with an ace, her second. Lindsay broke Steffi that first game of the first set right away, and I know she'd love to be able to do that again. Other players might have a letdown after beating Steffi, but not Lindsay. She's going to build on it. Oh. 13. And with hitting a lot of winners comes also making some errors because you're taking chances. Please keep your mobile, mobile phone switched off. Thank you. An easy hold for Graf to start the second set. Davenport, 6 4 in the first. And welcome back. And, uh, the point has been made and uh, covered for Lindsay Davenport. She wanted a net judge and for the first time on center court this fortnight. We have uh, one of Bud Collins fame Fortescue family going to work and you can see he's got the good fingers. Lindsay Davenport. Love one in the second after winning the first set. First set, Davenport has breezed through 13 in a row. The last time a champion won without uh, dropping a single set was Martina Navratilova in 1990, her last title. Oh. 13. I'm sure Lindsay to be in the same sentence as Martina on grass is <laughs> she'd be thrilled. 30, now you have to expect some bad bounces on this grass. Especially at the baseline. Players like Steffi Groff, they're so accurate and they they go for the lines. Another phone is ringing. To you. Davenport not happy with that backhand effort, so it's 30 all. And a little more bounce.
from Groff at the other end. But still in a foul mood. I mean, we, yeah. we're right on top of her, and we can see the, the expressions, and she's shrugging her face, and she is not happy with her play so far. Screaming in her hand and poor teeth. The smiles we've seen the whole well, last four or five weeks are not there in this match. No, she's been as happy as we've ever seen her at Paris and here in London. to that last forehand. Deuce. That forehand went a little wild. Doesn't have a lot of natural topspin on that shot, so it will go wild if it's flat, hit flat. First service game of Davenport couldn't convert. Here's a chance to take the lead in the second. Steffi really trying to keep it to Lindsay's forehand because if Lindsay gets a little tight, that forehand can break down. It is a flat shot most of the time, and she, when she slows down her racket speed, the ball sometimes flies. Graf isn't the only woman on this court today with a big forehand. Davenport, another punishing winner. And a bigger backhand on the Davenport side. Okay, missed and Davenport. the ace. So Davenport swipes away a break point, holds for one all. Big man at uh, Nike, Phil Knight, the CEO. Yes. Avid tennis fan. Supporting Lindsay Davenport, who's client of his. Fifteen love. Lindsay did well to get that game because it, one all is a lot different than two love for Steffi. Steffi serving. And there's the bad hop at Groff's end. Thirteen fifty. Fourteen fifty. Important for Lindsay to take her time in between points. Steffi is a natural rusher. She just likes to get the job, especially when she's losing. She likes to rush her opponent. It's 2-1 in the second. Davenport won the opening set. And we're back at Wimbledon. 
our ladies final on this 4th of July and here are the match statistics Chris very even I mean percentage of serves high for both players I think the, the only difference is the break chances I mean Steffi's had two oh. and hasn't been able to capitalize Davenport a better result there some of the clouds above center court deeper and heavier with gray keep our fingers crossed after this uh, rainy second week of the fortnight the first week was glorious but uh, oh, rain really causing some problems with scheduling oh, oh Steffi almost got to that ball 15 minutes. Davenport, unlike a lot of the younger players, feels comfortable up at the net. She's played a lot of doubles. She entered three divisions this tournament, singles, doubles, and mix, pulled out of the mix. Was playing with Mark Woodford. 15. <laughs> Steffi's turn to come into the net. Set the rankings for tomorrow, and Lindsay Davenport, with her successful run here at Wimbledon, will be number one. Hingis two, Groff three, Venus four, and Celis number five. Martina Hingis is, was out the first round, has promised us that she's getting ready by practicing on the hard courts, getting ready for the hard court summer. It's going to be a heated summer, boy, with the emergence of Dockage and Stevenson and Lucic, and we haven't even talked about Serena Williams, who didn't play here because of the flu. Oh. her second she was second in the championships in aces that gives her a total of 33 Alexandra Stevenson the young 18 year old from San Diego had around 60 aces as she advanced all the way to the semifinals as a qualifier making history first ever okay, Davenport. Davenport holds it's two all in the second set Groff did not like that two call from on. long distance as uh, we remind you, the official Rolex time of the match is 45 minutes. To correct myself, she was playing oh, mixed with Todd Woodbridge, and they were actually seated second, as we see here. Steffi goes for the lines an awful lot. Oh, there goes that down the line pass again. And Lindsay knows it's going there. And Lindsay said she'd have to stay low for those slice backhands, and she wasn't kidding. She's getting down beautifully, even on the volleys. Good court coverage by the six foot, two and a half inch Davenport. She, according to the Wimbledon compendium, is the tallest ever woman to play at Wimbledon. Oh, well, she missed a few of those that last service game of Steffi Groff, but she's making them now. Of 30 love, big point for her. And at that point, you just have to guess, and Lindsay guessed the wrong direction. 15 and 13. Another big point. going for the big forehand just missed 30 all at two all in the second Paul.
Thirty. Boy, she's lost a good opportunity here to go up a break on Stephanie with the set already winning the first set. I can't think about that now. No, no call Jeez. there. No call there, Steffi, for sure. Even Lindsay just started walking away. She thought the ball was out, too. Another close call, though. Steffi would be good just to play every ball at this point because they have had some questionable shots. But even Lindsay, look at her body language over there. She sensed that it was out, too. Point goes to Lindsay. To all deuce. Oh. A little chance. anger there from Groff. Oh, she's just been in a foul mood this whole match. And don't, I really don't think she ex expects to lose this match at all. Lindsay's putting up a great fight and Game holds 3-2 in the second. Davenport won the opening set. Steffi Groff, she's been part of a terrific summer for all of us uh, that have watched. And the one we're watching today here on the lawns of Wimbledon. Time. Not a single smile from hers. Game face is on. She's down a set. It's 2 3 on serve in the second. Yeah, the difference being in Paris, she did not expect to win that tournament. No one expected her to win that tournament. But this fortnight has been a different story. She's been the heavily favored player this whole time. And again, after that Venus Williams match, I think she's having a bit of a letdown. 15 left. Only 91 miles an hour, but a big slice near ace. Lindsay's showing so much poise for being the first final at Wimbledon. Oh. All right, I'm going to stop talking about her limited mobility. OK, Lindsay, I guess you've been sort of tired about hearing that the last couple of years. But good anticipation here, good moving, but also she saw that Steffi had her racket up like she was going to drop it over. from Davenport's end. It's 40 low. Well, this is the way she was stroking the ball Continue. yesterday against Alexander Stevenson. Mind you, Alexander was experiencing some jitters there and never really got into her game, but she hits a heavy ball, a big ball, good placement. Oh, but that was a good time to come in. I mean, she's up 40 love, serving to Groff's mm -hmm. backhand. Another point for three all in the second. This is where we put Steffi Groff on a, a different plane than all the other players. It's just how she plays the big points.
WNBA coverage continues Three next Saturday as the Mystics face the shock. That's next Saturday, a special time, 1 Eastern here on NBC, the WNBA. And we're at the big W, the Wimbledon Championships. Not too many players can find that small patch of grass on Steffi Groff's backhand, but Lindsay found it six times in a row. Football. Football is the call, the first of the match. sensing that was a good approach shot came in and that's wasn't a, was not an easy shot that high backhand volley. Skies more leaden. Oh. Lindsay continues to hit out and a few unforced errors off that serve. Skidded low. And, you know, it's a, obviously a tribute to her big forehand, but the reason why she hits big forehands is because of her footwork, because she gets over there to the ball in enough time where she can get good balance. Oh, it's long, 4 3 now in the second. Still no breaks in the set. Welcome back to Wimbledon with a big smile. Ted Schroeder, 50 years ago, he was the Wimbledon champion. In 1949, they presented the championship trophy in the Royal Box. It was the next year that they decided to have the ceremony on the court itself, Time. so he's part of the history in that regard. Lucky Schroeder from San Diego, California. It's a select. A elite group of uh, individuals in that section at Lindsay Davenport's end as she returns to serve at 3 4. Quiet, please. Thank you. Just a step. And once again, Steffi hit so low. Lindsay does not like to bend down. She's going to bend at the waist plus at the knees. Double bending practice there. 15. Lindsay's parents, Wink and Ann, not here. Although Ann did come to see her watch uh, win the U.S. Open last year, but they stay away. They're rare parents that don't meddle in her tennis life and. That's the way Lindsay likes it. Family of volleyball stars all involved in that sport. Very athletic family. Fifteen thirteen. Hey, an opportunity for the first time for Steffi Groff on Lindsay's serve. Up a point here. Heidi Groff looks pretty calm. She's seen her daughter in this situation so many times before. 
Boy, look at the bounce on that last serve. Four. Thirty. But boy, you sense Steffi. She's calmed down a bit. You know, she's just waiting for that one opening. That's all it'll take. She had one early in this set, second game, but couldn't convert. Oh, a point now, Davenport to four all. She's faced 33 break points, counting the two today in the championships, but has saved 26 times. Broken, but seven times Davenport serve. Key to her arrival at the finals. Oh, beautiful yeah, serving. Down. Three big serves in a row when she was down 1530. That shows me that she's she has good nerve right now. She's holding her own. There's the all time list of Grand Slam winners with Margaret Smith Court of Australia, 24, Groff with 22, Chris Everett and Martina Navratilova. With a measly, their career. With a well, measly but it's 18. nice that you're tied there at 18. Nice. Yeah. I wish I was tied with her in singles titles here, boy. Move the ball around a little bit better on that point. Oh! <laughs> Both players looking up to their competitor stand a little bit more. The normal, they they sense the every point's such a big point now. Especially for Groff, as we get deep into the second set, little room for error at her end. Down a set. Ooh. Oh, and Steffi knows that if she gives her some second serves, that more than 50% of the time the ball is going to be coming back like that with that much speed and accuracy. She was in this position yesterday with Lucic down a, a set and four all. Okay, let's go. Five four. Second set, Davenport six four in the opener. Back at the Cathedral of Lawn Tennis, Center Court, Wimbledon, where Lindsay Davenport. With a break in the very first game of the match, the only break thus far, giving her a 6 4 set. No breaks here in the second as Davenport prepares to serve at 4 5 to stay in the set. Go ahead, please. And put too much pressure on herself at this point to win her serve because yes, she needs to win her serve, but she has to realize she's still in a better position than Steffi Groff on the scoreboard. Steffi still should be the one with all the pressure because she's the one that has an uphill battle. Fifteen. Perfectionist, so tough on herself, yet so mentally strong out there. Oh, well, 
Al Brewer, a, a soft ball, I think, 50. just a tentative forehand from Lindsay Davenport, but it threw Steffi's timing off a little bit. Steffi looking up at the skies. The rain seems to be uh -oh. coming down. And it is. Our worst fear is being realized. There's the referee, Alan Mills. He has not sent out the Ladies crew and gentlemen, yet. players suspended. Here they come. Too familiar a sight and too frequent this uh, second week of the fortnight. The forecast, if correct, implied that there would be some showers, not rain. And uh, when they say rain, that means get ready for an all day experience. Just showers today, and they quickly uh, have that precious uh, piece of property covered. I'm sure that uh, Davenport and Groff not at all pleased that uh, they have to leave court. But we'll be back with uh, more of this ladies final more from the championships Wimbledon the break comes at four five Davenport serving 30 15 up a set. Back to the All England Club after this. And welcome back uh, indeed it was a light shower very brief and back on court Lindsay Davenport had a chance to assimilate the fact that she is very close to this ladies title winning the first set 6 4 they're on serve 4 5 30 15 in the second set only one break point in the entire set that was early second game and Groff had a chance to break was denied and in one the minutes. first set the one and only break chance of Lindsay Davenport in the very first game she was able uh, to convert and take the lead. I don't think the Ladies rain delay really benefited or hurt either player. I think it's just a matter of the match was so close before the rain delay. It's just a matter of who can get off to a quicker start. In the past, Steffi Groff has been known to be the quickest starter. It's interesting to note that during this last week when all the matches were delayed and some three, four, five times, uh, Groff had to go through this experience on and off the court. Lindsay Davenport, for whatever reason, was often scheduled well, first, and she got her matches in before the rains uh, came in mid-afternoon. So this is uh, something she is encountering basically for the first time in the championships. Let's look at the match statistics, oh, Chris. That uh, percentage of first serves, the same, 63%. That's pretty, pretty good for both players. Time. Winners on four stairs, Davenport 24 20, which really means I think the end four stairs, when you look at Davenport, they have come at the second set, especially off Steffi Groff's serve. She made a, a lot of errors off the return of serve there. And that's one of Davenport's strengths. Powerful returns. Get the opponent on the defense early. So here we go. They resume play at 30 15. Davenport serving 4 5. Wait, please. Oh, 13. Now, well, Lindsay jumping up and down, trying to get a little bit warmed up. Two points away from losing this second set. who Steffi's coach during the rain delay told her, try to mix it up a little more. Don't try to get into a slugfest with Lindsay because she's winning most of the rallies. This head down, not looking very encouraged at this point. I told her not to do that. A point now for Davenport for five all. Game is done, folks. Well, Lindsay came out pretty tough, pretty relaxed, yet played some tight Time points there. Has a smile for her coach. Graf 
two points more than Davenport. That's how close it is. She's moving in, getting closer. Look how close she was to the net, but doesn't like to jump. Thirty fifty. And that ball, because of the rain, just the court a little bit greasier, staying down even lower than normal. Playing some pretty fearless tennis. You could almost say she's two points from victory if she holds her serve like she has been. Thank you. 30 all at 5 all in the second. First serve from Steffi that set up this point. Got Lindsay out wide. Yeah. First serve. <laughs> Croft stares at our new net judge, uh, making his debut in the championships, as requested by Davenport. Early in the match. Sharp angle here from Lindsay with that two handed backhand. Just got Steffi out of the court. Bounces still staying lower than they were before the rain. Good serve from Graf. Another point for 6 5. And if you're just joining us, that wrap on the upper left thigh of Groff, a mild strain from the Venus Williams match. Doesn't seem to be hampering her movement though. Pressure points here at five all deuce. Davenport up a set. Oh, Steffi. I mean, she knows she's got a fight on her hands here because unlike the other two matches where she was behind, even Mariana DeShort, Venus Williams, Lucic, they wilted at the th they thought about it too much, beating Steffi Groff, but Davenport is getting stronger mentally as the match goes on. Oh. Lindsay Davenport has broken to take the lead 6-5. She will be serving for the Wimbledon title when we return.
What must be going through that young woman's mind at 23 years of age the Wimbledon title is on her racket as she prepares to serve against the seven time champion Steffi Groff and Chris it just appears that in that rain delay as she thought about her game plan she came out even hitting those service returns harder than ever. Oh, she well she's been through this she's been in big match situations. she has the confidence of having won the Olympics having won the US Open I think when you when you've had that experience it's second nature to go out and just hit out freely and play your game. She doesn't mind pace. She likes the pace of Steffi Groff. I mean, if Steffi hits hard, Time. Lindsay hits harder. At the start of the championships at the neighborhood bookmaker, you could get Lindsay Davenport at 15 to 1. And Lindsay's thinking at this point, I've got to get some big first serves in, like she has been the whole tournament, please. especially this match. But the long shot, almost with a nose on the finish line. Oh. Three points to victory, or a third ace. Oh. Aggressively approaching, pressuring Groff 15. into the air. Steffi Groff, pressure for her to come up some big returns right now, boy. Oh, good. Backhand down at the ankles of Davenport. 30-15. Now you hear the crowd support. Mostly for Thank Steffi you. at this point. Oh, they want a third set. 14, 15. Well, she's come up with some big serves. And two match points, two championship points for Lindsay Davenport. Some deep breaths. <laughs> We're pretty close to her in this box, and she's taking her time. Another match point. There it is. Oh, is. <laughs> Only the third American born woman in 30 years to win Wimbledon, joining Chris Everett and Billie Jean King. Lindsay Davenport is Wimbledon champion. As that ball from Groff landed in the net, it was almost as if someone shocked, sent an electrical shock through Davenport. She just stood there frozen as if to try to believe what his been accomplished. I think we're all in shock. You know, it was predictable that she'd win the U.S. Open. That was her goal. She dreamed about it so much. She excelled on the hard courts, but she didn't even play a warm-up tournament. She's always hated playing on grass and been very vocal about it. This is blowing her mind. She's <laughs> as shocked as anyone else. And I don't remember her crying qu quite like that after winning the U.S. Open. So on this 4th of July, there's one very happy American here in London, England. 15 to 1. Her coach, Robert Van Hoff, kiddingly said, I think I'm going to go down and put a lot of money on you. He didn't. <laughs> Probably wishes he had. And at match point, it was the pressure, the power of the ground strokes at Davenport forcing the Groff error. And then, the, what the, perhaps at this angle, we'll see the disbelief at the moment. Almost turning her back to Groff. Groff was waiting at the net while Davenport tried to assimilate the power of this moment in her career. A lot of skeptics. This tall, sometimes lumbering. She was heavier and 
two, three years ago. Didn't think she was uh, championship caliber. She's made herself fit. She's worked hard. And best of all, Chris, as you've said, she's such a good person. You have to feel so much happiness for her. The presentation of the Wimbledon Championship Trophy to Lindsay Davenport when we return. Plate presented to Steffi Groff. Duchess of Kent uh, exchanging conversation with a seven time champion. The joy was not on Steffi's face during this match like we've seen it the last few weeks. She wasn't in a good mood. She often looked disgusted with her tennis. She was talking to herself. Only the second time she has not won when reaching the finals of Wimbledon. And here's the new champion from the United States, Lindsay Davenport. did it the right way you know she went through the junior ranks she graduated from high school despite all the success she's so well grounded and popular among her fellow players I'm sure the locker room right now is on its feet cheering for her now it started last year at the US Open her first Grand Slam title and now she has half of the package winning at Wimbledon today now the chair umpire always recognized in the victory ceremony from England Fiona Edwards. Probably the most mellifluous softest voice of any chair umpire in the world. As you heard. Show you how close the match was Davenport 70 points and Groff 67 only two break points and for Davenport in the entire match she converted both. Never lost her serve. That was the key. The whole match. She held her serve. First serve so reliable yet so powerful at the same time. Steffi had no answer for that big first serve. Now Chris Gorringe of the All England Club guiding the two finalists up to the photographer's row. Interesting though this was the tournament that Steffi was gunning for all year. The French in her mind was just a warm up tournament. Interesting the, how it all turned out for her. She beat uh, a great champion in Groff, a woman that she lost to in the quarterfinals in Paris four weeks ago. champion you're looking at her right now. Well, on this 4th of July uh, the celebration has begun and uh, the promises for more pyrotechnics uh, in the men's match as Andre Agassi will match his solid ground game against the hard serving Pete Sampras in an All American final. And that will follow. The final moments of uh, this ceremony. Well, she's number one in the world yesterday with a semifinal one and confirming that status today as Wimbledon champion. I don't think there were many even in her most faithful camp when they came here from Southern California that felt that Lindsay Davenport had a solid chance to win Wimbledon but she proved uh, all her critics wrong did not sacrifice a single set in the championships. No one's done that since Navratilova nine years ago. 
Well, she proved me wrong. I picked Steffi to win the tournament. I thought the easy matches would hurt her in the end. But as a result, she was just fresher. And now she has to play a finals of a doubles match. She'll be brimming with confidence in that match. And we're anxious to get her reaction and Steffi Groff as well, of whether or not Groff felt that uh, thigh injury hampered her during this championship course. 6 4, 7 5, Lindsay Davenport at age 23 is the Wimbledon champion. Standing ovation for Lindsay Davenport, runner up Steffi Groff as they leave center court. And as they make the turn, we go to Bud Collins. Thanks, Dick. Bob Bashay bringing them around. Steffi Groff, you have lived so gloriously on this court. I congratulate you for getting to this final after the French. Why did you lose, do you believe? Well, first of all, she played an exceptional game. I mean, she served extremely well. It was very difficult for me to read where she was serving to, and she was mixing up pretty well. And I just think I was a little flat today somehow. I'm, my back and slides didn't really work very well. I made quite a lot of unfast errors of it and couldn't take the chances when I had them, but it happens. Were you surprised how she got down to that slice? Yeah, but I, it didn't really have a lot of sting on it today. I mean, I really didn't really follow through with it, and uh, I don't know. I, I know I can I can slice better than I did today. I mean, I, I guess in the second set it was a little better, which is not good enough. Could you believe that you would face only two break points? You would offer those, and that would cost you the match. Only two break points. Yeah, but the, f the first game that I served, I think there was one first serve in there, or maybe the most two, and. And uh, that's just giving her too many chances to attack my, my, my serve. And, and she returns very well, and she, she really took the chances. And, and that's what was the key today. Did the leg bother you? No, it's all right. Will we see you next year? I don't think so. You don't? I don't think so. Thank you, Steffi. A great queen. Well, here's Miss Firecracker. <laughs> Lindsay, congratulations. You had only two break point opportunities. Did you think you could win a match when you would only look at two break points? <laughs> Yeah, it was such a such a weird match, especially also to hold the whole time against Steffi, who's a great returner, but um, took advantage of the first game and uh, the one break point and took advantage of the one at five all in the second. And um, that's what I needed to do and serve well, and those were the main issues. You come back after a rain delay. You get to set match point one and you plunk a very weak <laughs> shot into the net. What is going on there? Well, why do you have to bring up the negatives? I served a great serve on the next one, you but uh, no, I mean, obviously it's a very uh, nerve wracking experience trying to close out a match, but I was really grateful I was serving. And, um, you know, to, to, to win this, uh, I was more in shock than anything else. And uh, I really can't believe it. And uh, that's my second one. And uh, I'll be glad to go for another now. But you were Miss Twinkletoes out there, the way you move. How are you getting down to that backhand slice so well? I don't know. It's such a tough court to try and get those back on. But um, I was really trying to bend low, trying to run some balls down. And, and, you know, she was playing pretty well, a couple loose games, and, and that's how I was able to win. Steffi just told me that this is her last Wimbledon. What's your reaction? You know, I, I heard that, too, and I, I'm obviously extremely sad, and um, obviously this probably means this is her last year playing, and uh, that's really sad because she's um, the greatest player that um, has played, in, I don't know, forever possibly, and uh, to, to win Wimbledon beating her and Novotna is um, such a, an amazing feat, and, and I'll miss her because uh, I've had some great matches against her. What is the feeling? You come out here, center court, Cathedral of Tennis, and you look across the net and you see this all-time champion. Do your knees shake a little? You know, I was so excited to be out there. I mean, uh, my first Wimbledon, I remember walking out there and I, I thought to myself, well, I made it here and, uh, you know, let's let's see if I can do one more. And, um, you know, after I think the rain delay might have helped me. I calmed down actually a little bit and came back firing balls. And, um, you know, uh, who knows? It, it was my day, I guess, and I'm going to treasure it. Perfectly saved match on serve you weren't broken you didn't lose a set in the tournament but last monday you were down set points to barbara shet could you have been out of here <laughs> that's right i forgot about that one but um yeah you always if you lose one set you got to go on but um i fought my way through that match like i did a lot of matches here and um to, to not lose serve is, is an amazing thing in women's tennis i think and uh i'll never forget I, that i did but that you're an amazing champion here she is shall we sing a chorus of yankee doodle dandy <laughs> fourth of july well oh, 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 oh lindsay 
Jersey Davenport has won it, Dick. Thank you, Bud. Congratulations again to Lindsey oh. Davenport and uh, that sullen uh, uh, look on Groff's face. Perhaps um, explained better now that maybe she took the court today, Chris Everett, thinking that. Win or lose, this was going to be her final Wimbledon. Well, the one thing about when you're an older tennis player, you have a lot of years on the tennis course. Yes, you do have great days, but boy, you have more down days. And as she said, she was flat today. She's a perfectionist. If she can't play great all the time, maybe it'll be just a bit too much for her at this point. She's already had a bonus with a big win in Paris, the French Open title. And today, for only the second time in a Wimbledon final, she falls. Lindsay Davenport is the Wimbledon champion. Now, the last of the unfinished business. Pete Sampras, can he be the winningest?